Well, let me give you the scripture first. Scripture is going to come from 2 Matthew. Starting at the ninth verse. 2 Matthew, the ninth verse. 2 Matthew, chapter 2. In the ninth verse, thank you. 2 Matthew, chapter 2, verse 9. You have to say amen. You got it? We talk about Christmas. The joy, the meaning of Christmas, what Christmas is. Why you can hopefully leave here today and your joy for Christmas will change. I pray it will. You only gonna get out of this what you're gonna put in it. You only get out of anything. You don't put none in it, you don't get none out of it. This is where it, this is where it reads. It says now. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. They being the wise men. Verse 10, when they, when they which is the wise men, saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. Verse 11, and when they, the wise men, were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they, the wise men, had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and mirth. You may be seated. Subject. Bringing back the joy of Christmas. Bring back the joy of Christmas. I don't know about you, but I've been pondering and thinking, looking at this whole month and going to the malls and stores and people are rude and, and people are just, you know, they'll kill each other over G.I. Joe with a hand, handful grip. People fighting over Bobby dolls and People are more concerned that the that the, that the, that the, that the, that the, the, the color of the the, the toy don't look like the, the, the Bobby White. She don't look black. I don't want to buy that for my kid. I mean, all this foolish, negative, crazy junk has nothing to do with Christmas. I I I stand the key. Of these issues. How I lost my joy for Christmas because I got caught up into the humbug. You remember uh, Mr. Scrooge? He was evil and mad about Christmas because everything for him was about money and all this other stuff and gifts and he didn't want none of that. None. Yeah, he wanted no part of Christmas because everywhere he went, they were singing city sidewalks, busy sidewalks, and he was shut the window. Wham! Don't want to hear it. They was out shopping and spending their money, and he was like, oh, humbug, they stupid. I don't want to spend no money. I keep my money. Those dummies, they just waste their money. Something happened to Mr. Scrooge because he had lost the joy of Christmas. Now, what I want to share with you, shopping, singing carols, Celebrating the joy of Christmas is, watch this, you are never going to understand Christmas until you first know what Christmas is. Amen. See, 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 watch this. See, you, Christmas is like, Jesus is like the anchor. Mm -hmm. That means whenever you lose your joy, you got to go back to the rock of our salvation. Whenever you lose your joy, you got to go back to the meaning of Christmas. Pastor, what are you saying? This is what I'm saying. As I read the scriptures, which I can read them again for you, you have to understand that the wise men, y'all with me? All right. They had a purpose. Before Jesus was born, the wise men knew that they were looking for the Messiah. They knew that they was on assignment. Watch this. If you go over here to verse 11, you will find out that they had a purpose. They had a purpose, first lady. But before Jesus was born, they had a purpose. Pastor, what was their purpose? Remember what the Bible said. They came bringing gifts. 
Anybody going to help me today? They came bringing gifts. Uh -huh. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. They came bringing gifts. That means that before they met Herod the king, before they had to go look for the star, before they did all that, they had a purpose to find this young, this young child that was born, born of a virgin, wrapped in swaddling clothes, and they knew that his name was Emmanuel. They knew that we got a purpose to find this young person. So they went diligently seeking, looking to find him. I got to help you here today. Some of y'all in here right now, let's stay with me. Some people in here right now are diligently seeking to find Christmas. Amen. And you will never understand the joy of Christmas because you're seeking to find it. But once you know what Christmas really means, and you don't have no problem giving gifts. You don't have no problem filling up Christmas. Some folks are saying, oh my God, I was in the church this morning. I walked by and I saw the Christmas tree and I was like, should we have a Christmas tree in the church? And God spoke to me. And he said, if you can't have a Christmas tree in the church, then you don't need a Christmas tree in your house. That means if you don't believe in Christmas in a tree, then you don't believe in Christmas tree in the house. If you don't believe in gifts in the church, then you don't believe in gifts in the house. Tell them. Mr. Scrooge, oh, right. Amen. God had to show me something. Right here in the text, he had to show me that the wise men, see, you got to be wise. You got to be wiser than a serpent. Serpent is Satan. You got to be wiser than the serpent. Because Satan will trick you into believing that Christmas is this, 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 and this. Christmas is this. Amen. Christmas is searching. Look what the Bible said. It says right here, and when they heard the king, they depart. Here's the part I like. It says, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till they came and stood. Watch this. They had a purpose. Stay with me, church. They had a purpose. They had gifts. I wish I had some help in here today. They had gifts. And they brought gifts. I went to the store. I bought my wife a gift. I bought my daughter a gift. I bought my mother a gift. I bought my son a gift. I bought gifts. But when I give them the gifts on Christmas Day, yeah. it's not what's in the gift that's important. Yeah, that's the right. It's the thought that count. But the most important piece is I thought about them before I got to them. Amen. Amen. The wise men already knew that they had a gift for themselves. What God wanted me to tell folk is it's a shame that you come to church on Sunday and don't bring a gift. Amen. Some people come to church on Sunday and don't don't bring, don't, bring don't bring a gift. Don't bring no tithes. Mm -hmm. Don't give no offer. Some of y'all giving the same gift. Yes. One dollar. Yes. Been giving the same gift all year. Yes. But I'm coming to the church. I'm coming to the Messiah. Yes. See the difference? God want to wait. I wish I could wake preach up. just the way I feel it. He want to shake y'all up. Yes, right. He want y'all to wake up and see some things. Yes. You got some folk in the church, all they in here for is to get, get, get. And never give, give, give. That's why you rich. Because you learn that it's more blessing to give. Then it is to rich. Some folk in the church, all they want, like the rich ruler, they want to give. They don't want to give, I mean they want to receive. See, see, watch this. The wise men knew that what they was giving Christ. That gift was nowhere near. Watch this. Y'all ready for the real truth? Watch this first lady. How can you give a gift to the gift giver? <laughs> they were taking gifts. <laughs> They're taking gifts to the, to the one who's coming to bring. He was a gift. He was the gift. Unto you was born this day. In the city of David, a savior, which is Christ the Lord. He came to save us.
from our sins. He came to bring the most greatest gift that man ever seen. God sent his only begotten son wrapped up in a gift. And the gift that came on that Christmas morning it was a present. Don't let nobody tell you it's wrong to give gifts on Christmas. Jesus is a symbol of what a gift is. Yes. What's in the package? Yes. His father gave a gift. He came to be a gift. The wise men bought gifts. Subject, bringing back the joy of Christmas. Look at what it said here in verse 10. And when they saw the star, back up a little bit, Pastor. Verse 9, thus, lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them. Who is the star? Come on. Now, ain't this crazy? Watch this, it's gonna blow your mind. Though he was on earth, wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, but yet he was the star to show them how to get to him. Huh? Now tell me that don't blow your mind. Huh? I'm here. Like, watch, watch, watch. People can't get with this. I'm here in the beginning. I'm going to be here now and I'll be here forevermore. He was there while he was there. He was shining while he was shining. Shining above while I'm shining in the manger. The star. He was sitting in the manger leading the wise man to him. It's got no help in here today. Jesus, the, the, the Emmanuel, God with us. They said, they saw the star in the east, went before them. That means the star led them to him. God is leading us today, church. He is the star. He's that shining star. Uh-huh. That's what should be leading your hearts on Christmas. Amen. Sister Vernon, leading our hearts. Right. Don't be led right. by what you know, what you think, uh, what you feel, what you come. see. Be led by yes. the star. Amen. This is what leads us right here. Amen. His word. If you ain't if you ain't reading the word and you ain't living the word and you ain't abiding in the word, that's why you don't have no joy in Christmas. Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh to the Father except he come by me." God, Jesus is letting us know, "I am Christmas. I am Christmas." And what is God, huh? What is Jesus? He's love. The Bible said Jesus is love. The star is love. The baby wrapped in swaddling clothes landed in the manger is love. Everything about Christ is love. So on this Christmas season, forget about what you feel, what you think. Know that this is the day that the Lord has made. Know that the Savior is born. Wonderful counselor. Yes. Prince of peace. Yes. Mighty God. Yes. Huh? Christmas. Christmas. You ought to celebrate yes. it. Yes. Hark the horrors. <laughs> Angels sing. Glory be yes. to the newborn king. Yes. Peace on earth right. and mercy mine. Yes. What do you do? God has sent. Reconcile. That's the kind of songs that when we sing, we ought to be singing and recognizing that because of this day, we have hope. Because of this day, you can open up your gifts right now. Somebody say, Pastor, what gift? See, you got to see it. You ain't got to see it. You got to open up your gifts that God gave you. You ought to be able to say, you know what? I thank God for Christmas. Amen. Right. Because this morning when I woke up, I opened up my gift. What was it? Life. I opened up another gift. What was it? Breath. I opened up another gift. What was it? Sight. I can see. 
I opened up another gift. What was it? I had my legs. I could walk. God just provided me. Look all around me. All these gifts. Thank you, Jesus, for all these gifts. You just keep on blessing me over and over and over again. It's not about money. It's greater than that. What else did I open up today when I, when I opened up my gift, Pastor? I opened up another box and then look, what was in it? Hope. Hope for tomorrow. If things don't go right today, Pastor, you got hope. Because there's always tomorrow. Hope. Love. Joy. That's what you should be buying when you go out and buy gifts. When you see that individual person, you ought to see love. You ought to see joy. Why? Because when they open the gift, you ought to bring love to them. You ought to bring some hope to them. You ought to bring some forgiveness to them. You ought to bring some joy. I had lost my hope. I had lost my joy, church, when it came to Christmas. I didn't feel it. I was walking around in a maze like, you know what? I wish this was just hurry up and get over with. Every year is about money. Every year is about just gifts and presents. And always just stores are getting fed off of everybody buying. And I miss all these people walking around and they laughing and they buying and they having fun. And Christmas should be about family, food, and fun. I'm about to close. 11th verse says, when the wise men found the young child, it says he was with his mother, Mary. This is what they say when they found him. They fell down. See, this is what God is trying to show us this Christmas season. What you got to understand, if you're going to celebrate Christmas, you got to understand why. Am I celebrating Christmas? See, because once they found what they was looking for, not what Herod the king sent them to, because they were looking for him before they found Herod. But when they found what they were looking for, the Bible said that they fell down <laughs> at his feet. Watch this here. They could not have failed down and worshiped him if they didn't know who he was. Amen. See, a lot of us, we, we lose sight of who people are in our lives. Amen. And that's why we, we forget. See, they knew who Jesus was. So once they got there, what are you saying, Pastor? I'm trying to get y'all to see something. It don't take a keyboard. It don't take a drum. It don't take a choir. When you walk in the door of a church that God has established for you, a place just for you to come and worship, a place for you to come and lay down your burdens, a place for you to come and, 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 and wash away your sins. When you get in here, once you know where you at, once you know who created this for you, you ought to walk in the church and you ought to watch what you should do. You ought to fall down on your knees. And you ought to worship him. Yeah, Who? He that created. Right. What else did they do during this Christmas season? Not only did they worship Christ, they came bringing yeah. gifts. Amen. What kind of gifts they brought? Gold, frankincense, and mirth. They came bringing gifts, bro. You got you to gotta see this thing. How can you come before the Savior? How can you come before the Savior with nothing to give? Somebody need to hear this today. People come to church every Sunday bringing nothing. God is teaching you. When they came, uh, uh, 
that day and they came to see the Savior. They came bringing, came bearing gifts. You will go out and buy all kind of gifts for our family members. Treat packed and come into church and won't give a dollar. Won't give nothing. But then, this is, what, this is where I need some help at. Yeah. Told y'all, Jesus said the poor would be with us always. Uh -huh. I didn't get a chance to really work on that like I really wanted to, Lex. The poor would be with us always. This is what the Bible was trying to show us. Sister Verna and Sister some of the other ones. We are being hoodwinked and bamboozled and all kind of stuff because of poor people Plan. First lady, can you read that again? Because it's beautiful that you say that today I'm about to preach it. Here it is right here. An apology without change is just manipulation. Uh -huh. That's what God's showing us. There's a reason why the poor will always be with us. Because what Jesus was trying to show them, there will always be stingy people on the earth. Yes. Amen. I ain't making this up. Right. It's in the word. Watch what he said. I'm going to make it plain. I'm going to make it clear to everybody in this room. Watch what the Bible says. I curse those who curse me. Amen. Did he not say my word will not go out and come back to me? That means if I say I curse those that curse me, then my word don't come back and say, you a liar because you didn't. If I say I'm going to curse those that curse me, I'm going to curse them. Amen. That's the same folk that's walking around begging us, can I get, can you give, can I get this? And I guarantee you, when you really look at it, they ain't in church, they ain't giving God, they ain't paying no tithes, they out here, and what it is, they so stuck. They so stubborn from a hell that they are saying, I don't care what God say, I'm going to do it my way. That's why you poor. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Had a friend of mine call me this week, blowing up my phone three days, night, all day, early in the morning if I can get up. John, you gonna send me this money? John, you gonna give me this money? I need this money, man. I need this. Can you send it to me? So I hit him with this. What's your bank account number? I don't have no bank account. Hmm. What are you looking at? Staying in the car. God asked me to ask him the most important question. What church you go to? Uh -huh. Don't go to church. Uh -huh. So you don't go to church, but you got enough sense to call the pastor yeah. and tell me, uh, I'm about to preach something about to blow your mind. You, get ready. Uh -huh. Watch this here. See, only God, he deal with me, so I'm a, I'm a thinker. I'm very deep. Yeah. See, the word of God is just not, he said, it's, it's, it's blind to those who don't worship God, the word of God is a mystery. Mm -hmm. Watch this here. For years I've stood and preached the word about the five wise and the five foolish. The Bible says Jesus taught a parable. He said there were five wise and there were five foolish. He said the wise got oil in their lamps. They were ready for the bridegroom to come. But the foolish, they played, didn't listen, and they had no oil. Look what God showed me next. Holy Spirit. <laughs> I was sitting here dealing with these things, these issues, these thoughts. And he said, Pastor, can't you see this? My word won't go out and come back to the board. I told you that I curse those. And I'm looking at my life and I'm like, wow, I'm blessed. I'm steady increasing. God's steady blessing me. God's steady doing. But I pay my tithes. I don't give a dollar for offering. 
Every year I increase my offering, I give more. And it seems like the Bible is just, word is so true, the more you give, the more he'll keep giving unto you. Press down, shaking over, to I pour into your bosom. You're not just blessed, your wife blessed, your children blessed. Blessings are all around you. What make you any different than your brothers and sisters? God had to show me. Then I give it. See, your, your finances is, is blessed by you blessing God. Right? Yeah. Back to the 10 verses. He wanted me to see something. Don't miss this, Lex. He said in the, in the scripture, this is a key point that a lot of people miss. He said that when the, when the groom came, he said, the foolish ran to the wise and said, give us of your oil because our oil had run out. God had to show me something. He said, when you're dealing with these people on the streets and in the church that don't have and always begging, he said, stop just giving folk. Start asking folk. Find out how their life lines up. You know, if they go to church, if they're paying their tithes, if they're giving unto God, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I know it's preaching. Because okay. what God is saying, what they're doing, they manipulating people. Uh -huh. They're being disobedient to God. Yeah. I'm cursing them because they're not giving. And then they run to you and say, give me of yours because mine has run out. Yours run out because God ain't blessing you. He's cursing you. And why am I going to give to a cursed person? Why am I going to give what I got? God blessing me to a person that's cursed. So what God is saying, if you want to continue to give your blessings to a cursed person, You're going to perish yeah. from a lack of knowledge. Amen. Everybody around here ain't broke because they just broke. I had to start sitting around. I had to start just watching stuff. I watched some stuff this morning. God showed me. He keep telling me, just Shut up and just look. Look and watch. Look and listen. Look and pay attention. Sometimes we do this too much. Oh, yeah. That we can't see or hear what's really going on. Make sure they're off to be a pass. Some of y'all ain't giving. Broke. Busted. Disgusted. Can't roll two nickels together and still won't give. Still won't give. But always got your hand out. Help me, help me, help me, help me. What God said, the poor will always be among you. You know why? Because they don't give. I keep cursing them, and that's why they keep begging. Uh, that ain't enough for y'all. Go on over here to Paul and Silas. Uh, no, excuse me. Peter and John. Go to Peter and John. Bible said Peter and John came to the gate called Beautiful. And when they arrived, there was a beggar standing outside the, the temple. They was outside the church. What was he doing, Drill? Huh? Manipulating, playing on church folk. He was standing in front of the church because he knew they was going in to see to, to worship God and to give God glory. So he went on the corner. He went down the street. He stood in front of the sanctuary with his hands out saying, Give unto me. He didn't say, I'm going in the church with y'all. I want to hear this message. Maybe God will bless me. He stood outside the church with his hands out, begging. But when he ran into Peter and John, I wish I, I, wish I had a Peter right now to rock, to rock steady with this John. Because God done changed my mind. He said when Peter and John came to them, even though they had money, this is what God telling me to deal with these beggars. He told them, he said, silver and gold have I got. But such as I have rise from your from guilt, from from greed, from from poor. Rise up and walk. Stop giving these people. 
people your money on the streets. You want to give them something? Tell them, God be with you. You want to give them something? Tell them, rise from where you are and get up and go to church. Tell them to rise and pray and God shall supply all of your needs. Give them a gift. Give them a present. Give them the word. They probably don't want to listen to you. But the thing I want you to understand, they might not listen to you right then. But sooner or later. The Bible said, one plant, the other water. And God give the I'll give you an increase. Christmas. Bring back the joy. Bring back the joy of Christmas. Drop this last seed in the mouth. Crazy she here today. I'm sharing with Brother Derek this morning. God showed me something. When I was a little boy, Little boy, about 10, little 10 guy coming up. My uncles and aunts, they were coming from far, all the way from New York. And every Christmas they came, they brought my cousins, came from Brooklyn, and various places in New York. And, and every car was loaded down with gifts, every car was loaded down with with family. It wasn't the gifts and it wasn't that, it was just to see them. My cousins jump out of the car, they run up to me and we, we knew we were gonna have a great time because we were all together. I could see my mom greeting her sisters and brothers and my grandmother standing in the kitchen her, with her apron on and she was putting the turkey in the oven uh, turning the dressing over, checking the pies and the cakes. And as a little boy, I saw all these things. And I said, that's the joy. That's the joy of Christmas. Family, food, and fun. Grandma passed away. And my mom and her family, they kept it together. So now every year I, I go to mom's house and my mother's cooking pies and cakes and gifts under the tree and she buy gifts for all her grandchildren and a lot of the family members, they just, they just, she's trying to keep the family the food and the fun in Christmas. But then I look at the next generation, us. I'm praying that somebody, upon Bishop's departure, when she leaves, that somebody in our family, but I don't see it, will keep the family, the food, and the fun. Somebody said, well, Pastor, how do you not see it? Because I look at my sister and my brother and my other sister's gone, and a lot of times we be saying stuff, when mom leave, we gonna just stay in our own houses. Which, which is okay, because the, the next scene's supposed to be me and Drea, and our children, and they supposed to see family, food, and fun. Thanksgiving just passed. <coughs> in our house, I don't know where our food came from. I know one of those ovens cooking, one of those food smelling. None of that. We had family. Jay was missing. Food won't right. Somebody say mercy. Somebody say bless pastor. Bless pastor. Keep on saying that in your prayers. I think Dre and Josh and Lex, I don't know. Everybody just left me. Yeah, Lex went over her friend house. 
So we just, me and I was by myself. Drea and Josh gone. How many are watching TV in Dallas think it's good? This was a bad Thanksgiving for you. I need y'all to pray my strength that Christmas is going to be a lot better. Amen. I'm praying Christmas is going to be a lot better. Amen. I just want to throw that out there, but I think y'all got the, the gist of what I wanted to say today. I want y'all to bring your joy back in Christmas. Amen. Amen. It's not about the gifts under the tree and what you're going to get and what you don't get. Remember, it's family, food, and fun. You sit around this Christmas with your family. Just make it, make it a fun day. Just be glad to see everybody. If somebody asks you, oh man, we don't have nothing, just tell them what Pastor shared with you about all these gifts that they opened that they don't even realize. Tell them about the present that says hope, the present of love, the present of joy, the present of seeing, the present of walking and talking, and the present just of a new day. Share those presents with them and let them know God has truly been good to us as we look around and see our tree full of gifts. Because it's not about the natural presence. you got to go to a store and buy. And remember the number one gift that keeps on giving is Jesus. Just remember that. For God so loved the world, he gave he gave his only begotten son. So if you wake up on Christmas Day and you don't have one present, you can say, tell the devil you're a liar because I got Jesus. And God gave his son to me. And so because he gave his son, I got everything I need because in Jesus is joy. In Jesus is love. In Jesus there's hope. In Jesus is everything. And so God gave the gift that keeps on giving. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Give God and God some praise. Amen. Give God some praise. Come on, thank you, thank you, thank you. He's worthy. He's worthy. Bring back the joy in Christmas. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask at this time, uh, uh, trustee ministry, to come forth at this time. We'll be able to.